Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to go for a bit of an adventure. We're going to visit a star that used to be known as the largest star in our galaxy. This was a star by the name of V.Y. Canis Majoris. And today we're going to go for a visit, explore it, and talk a little bit more about it. And anyway, welcome to What The Math. So let's escape our beautiful solar system and let's go to VY Canis Majoris, also known as VY CMA. It's actually pretty far away from us. It's at a distance of about uh, 4,900 light years. We're going to scroll through all of these other stars and zoom right into it using the space engine. And what we're going to do is actually explore some of the planets that this particular star has. Even though these particular planets in this simulation are actually procedurally generated. But let's actually first discuss the star in general. So, this is a very, very large star. It's about 1400 times the uh, radius of our own uh, sun. And its mass is cr close to about 20 masses of our sun as well. This star is so massive that if we were to place it in our solar system, it would very likely actually cover all of the planets up to uh, possibly even past Jupiter. It's essentially tremendously large. Now, one thing about this star is that it's known as a supergiant, specifically a red bright supergiant. This particular star um, doesn't really have a very easily defined boundary. The surface here has very, 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 very low density. Uh, that's like millions of times lower than the density um, of atmosphere on Earth. And because of this, it's actually kind of hard to say if the star starts here or here or here. But we have to make an assumption somewhere. So we think it's about 1400 um, radii in radius or 1400 solar radii in radius. Now its surface is very bumpy and that's because, it, like I said, it's very hard to define its actual surface. So this is how Space Engine represents this model. Now we have quite a few planets here. We can actually press this button right here and discover that there is actually um, eight different planets, each with its own sort of composition, its own atmosphere and its own interesting parameters. Let's go to the first one. This one is just simply known as 1, VY Canis Majoris 1. And as we go in there, let's look at its temperature, at its surface, and basically find out what's on the surface here. Now, one interesting thing about um, this solar system is that um, it's actually surrounded by a nebula. The nebula was formed by what seems to be companion stars that exploded um, as supernova a long time ago, and their remains are now essentially... Um, in the vicinity of Canis Majoris and Canis Majoris is so luminous and so powerful that it creates a very interesting, very beautiful nebula. Unfortunately, I can't really show you this in Space Engine because it hasn't really been added yet, but hopefully one day we'll get to see it as well. And as you can see, this particular planet, which is the closest to the star, has a temperature of about 550 degrees Celsius. It also seems to have a few moons um, on its surface, uh, or sorry, not on its surface, but orbiting around it. Each of the moons is also very, very hot. Let's maybe look at the surface of this planet and find out what it actually looks like. And so we're going to kind of gently try to land right in this region right here. And maybe it's not going to be so gentle and oh my god, this is a crash. And so now that we've crashed on the planet number one in Canis Majoris system, we can maybe just explore some of the features here just a little bit to see what it actually looks like. Uh, now the temperature of the surface of the star is about 3500 degrees Kelvin, so it is pretty hot. And because it's so big, it actually is also very luminous. It's about um, 300,000 times more bright, more luminous than our own sun. And so there is quite a lot of heat that these planets receive, even though they're actually very far away from the actual center of the solar system. 
Um, and back when this star was not uh, such a massive, such a large star. Actually, it was. It was. It was used to be even more massive, but it wasn't always so large. It used to be what's known as an O star. Uh, it was a very bright blue O star with about a mass close to about 35 masses of our sun. And then when it sort of finished um, fusing all of the hydrogen on the inside, it started fusing helium. And that's when it became so large and so poofy. Now I found this really cool mountain here. This looks absolutely amazing. But anyway, so this is what this first planet looks like. Let's maybe go to the second planet known as planet number two. Planet number two is a little bit cooler at 260 degrees Celsius, but it has 53 moons because it's a hot gas giant. Uh, and we're going to actually take a look at it as well because it's about half the mass of Jupiter, but look at all of these beautiful moons orbiting around it. And so this kind of actually looks like Jupiter too. Maybe not as beautiful, I think, but definitely very interesting. We won't really be able to explore all of these objects. And as a matter of fact, I, I kind of encourage you to come back to the system yourself and take a look at all of these moons that these planets have. But this is actually just for fun, because like I said, these are maybe not real. These are all procedurally generated and they probably, if they do exist, will look nothing like this in reality. Now we know that um, this system probably had planets at some point and probably still does and that's because the metallicity of the system is relatively high meaning that the chance for creation of planets is also very high so when Canis Majoris used to be an old type star it probably had quite a few uh, beautiful planets orbiting around it and some of those planets that were closer to Canis Majoris which is still over there actually um, probably got swallowed up and became part of it. And some of the uh, planets like this one that were on the outskirts um, basically stayed there and uh, their orbit probably changed a little bit because Canis Majoris lost um, more than a half of its mass or at least a half of its mass when it transitioned from the O type to M type that, that it is right now. And um, interestingly, a lot of these planets um, would probably actually change their um, temperatures from being ice worlds to, look at that, very comfortable uh, 42 degrees Celsius, which means that there's probably liquid water here. Yeah, look at that, liquid water or liquid something. Yeah, that's definitely water. So this is actually very interesting. We found at least one planet. This is planet number four as uh, a warm Terra. It mostly has uh, CO2 uh, on the surface and methane. So it's not really breathable atmosphere, but it is a pretty cool planet, nevertheless, that has at least one moon orbiting around it as well. That's actually a uh, hot Oceania. Basically, it's a, it's a moon that has or seems to have very hot ocean at 220 degrees Celsius. I don't know what kind of ocean this is, what it's made out of, but it's uh, very, very boiling hot. We can't really see it because it's a little bit dark here. Anyway, next planet is actually going to be a little bit colder at minus 51 degrees Celsius. And now we reach the region of space that's sort of beyond the uh, so-called habitable zone where liquid water can no longer exist. So the last few planets will probably be completely frozen, completely icy. And so here, what we seem to have is basically a cool Selena, which is basically a frozen cold world, not particularly friendly to human beings. The next one, is uh, even colder, minus 98 uh, degrees Celsius, and also has three moons, which is actually very interesting. It seems that pretty much every planet seems to have at least a few moons, which is really actually interesting, very exciting, because not even all of the planets in our solar system have uh, moons. Venus and Mercury don't. And here we have uh, what seems to be a very tiny cold asteroid, which is very cute, very interesting looking. All right, so this was a planet number uh, six. Let's finish this exploration with planet number seven and planet number eight. And uh, just uh, take a look at what they actually have um, in their systems as well. And this one is a warm gas giant. Suddenly the temperature here is actually 64 degrees Celsius. So I was wrong about the temperature decreasing. Um, it contains mostly hydrogen and helium. And its mass is about 23% uh, of mass of Jupiter. But what's, oh, it even has a beautiful ring around it. 
But what's really interesting is that there's 37 moons. Uh, very beautiful giant storm right there. And uh, this might actually possibly have a moon or something that might actually possibly be habitable. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I kind of thought that maybe the temperature would actually uh, transfer to some of the moons here, but that wouldn't really make sense, right? But despite this gas giant being so warm, none of its moons are warm, actually, and all of them have a temperature of, like, minus 140 degrees Celsius, simply because they're still kind of far away from uh, Canis Majoris. But this is actually really interesting. I'm guessing it's because of the pressure. The pressure probably causes this uh, moon to be very, very, very hot, or very warm compared to some of the other objects. And the last and uh, farthest object, uh, planet number 8, uh, temperature minus 180 degrees Celsius, also has 10 moons. That's crazy. I wonder where they're getting all these moons from. And this frozen ice world um, seems to be quite unimpressive, actually. But it does uh, have a very beautiful aurora around it, which is very unusual and is uh, probably or most likely caused by tremendous amounts of flares and um, various highly charged particles that are coming from Canis Majoris and are basically striking the atmosphere of this planet. So that's actually uh, one of the points I wanted to make. Uh, for all of these planets to have atmosphere, they would need to have very powerful magnetic fields because Canis Majoris would very likely strip them of anything otherwise. And there's actually a frozen ice world right next to it, which I guess is its moon or possibly its uh, dual planetary body. And well, that's really it. That's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to kind of do a bit of an exploration, show you what Canis Majoris looked like in the um, Space Engine, but also most importantly, talk about some of the cool features of the system and uh, also just give you an idea of uh, what uh, this system and what other red giant systems, uh, red super giant systems are actually like, and the fact that they actually do have planets, and their planets are very interesting. And anyway, thank you so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and hopefully you'll come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with people that enjoy watching these types of videos and want to learn through video games, and consider supporting this channel Patreon as well. Anyway, I'll see you guys later, space out, and as always, bye-bye.